what's up guys um sorry i haven't made a video in a long time but uh i i wanted to get something uh that was of great value to me so i had to get i had to train in the mountains for a while so uh i i went to about uh eight um eight shop championships to try to get the certificate and i finally got one on the seventh try so lucky number seven so i finally got one uh, i i ideally wanted to get um uh, about uh, how much did I want to get? I wanted to get three. Uh, what the uh, the U7 Frieza deck uh, that I that I took to the event. Uh, I ended up yeah playing Frieza um, for only seven of the event. The first event I went to, I played uh, Ginyu Veggies, thinking that it would be uh, a decent deck. Um, in my opinion, I think it's one of the worst decks I've ever played in my life. Um, generally, because uh, most people know how to play against it. Um, so if you're if you're net decking, it goes back to the theory that if you net if you net deck a deck off the internet uh, that had success in the tournament, it's likely that people will prepare against it and uh, play the anti-meta version of the uh, against the deck, and then they have a higher chance of winning. So instead, uh, for my second tournament, um, I ended up switching leaders immediately after I realized that everyone knew how to play against Ginyu Veggies, uh, and I played this leader instead. Um, so I'm going to go over some analytics that, um, that went on during the tournament. I did go, um, I did top six out of the seven events that I went to with, uh, this leader. So to, to illustrate this, I, I got the top loaders. There's five of them total. Uh, the sixth one I gave to my friend who got me into this game, uh, when I first started, uh, playing this game. So he got me into this game and so I gave one to him. So I originally I had six top loaders, so but I gave it I gave it away. So um, yeah, uh, they also came in like these event packs. Uh, they came in like these uh, um, what is it pack gold packaging, and they give you like these special rarities. So it was a really fun uh, experience for me. It was really great. Um, I did have to try about eight times unfortunately, but the experience was what made it worthwhile for me. It was kind of like I was on vacation, which I am because I'm not going to college um, during the summer. So I'm spending my time playing uh, Dragon Ball, which is what I really love to play. So um, uh, my friend or my brother went to Anime Expo. So he got me this uh, playmat. Uh, it's a really nice little playmat. The ink is really done well on this. Uh, I don't think there's a hint of uh, uh, blurriness in the in the photo that he gave me or in, the, uh, in this playmat. So I'm glad that he got it for me. It was only worth twenty dollars. I'm not sure if it's going to be an exclusive that you can only get at Anime Expo, but uh, yeah. So um, I'm going to go over some analytics. Um, so I, I constructed a pie chart on makeapiechart.com. <laughs> um, so let me look what I have here. So so if you look at the pie chart, I'll have it right here on this side. Um, I played about twenty five percent, twenty five point nine percent SSJ three. Um, so that was the majority of the, uh, the leaders that I played against, um, uh, which is about a quarter, uh, of my matches were that leader. Uh, it was mainly played with, uh, Chain Attack Xeno, so it was a very popular engine in most of the SJ3 decks. Um, I imagine when set 4 drops, uh, there's gonna be a lot more, uh, SJ3 decks, but it'll be playing, uh, not so much Chain Attack Xeno, maybe it will, but it'll be mostly playing, um, the Flute, uh, Legendary Flute. Uh, I'm not sure what the full name is, but it bounces back any three or less card, uh, battle card on the battle area back to the owner's hand. Uh, and then I had a 14.8% uh, Ginyu Veggies, so I played about four, uh, four games against them. Uh, and then I played against uh, three games against uh, U7 Frieza, uh, three games against Xeno Trunks, two games against um, Vegeta, two games against Matt Saiyan, two games against Pan, uh, one game against U7 Gohan, which typically was uh, Danny Hype's list, uh, what he was promoting on, on his channel. Uh, and then I played against one game against Androids, one game against Khalifla, which is weird, uh, and then one game against Golden Frieza, which is really weird. So, um, total, uh, I was more likely to play against conventional leaders. Um, if you consider uh, U7 Frieza, uh, Ginyu and SJ3 to be the conventional leaders and then the rest that I listed on my pie chart to be not so um, not so 
conventional, then yeah, I had a what? Let me see the analytics here. So on my next analytic, uh, I constructed a, another one by percentage. So I had a 50, out, out of the leaders I played, 51.8% was SJ3, uh, Ginyu, and U7 Frieza. Uh, and the other one was 48.2% other leaders. So uh, that's not the interesting aspect of my my analysis of my matchups, I guess, from the perspective of my list, uh, from my, my matchups. But the interesting part is that, uh, well, I did win 20 out of 27, which is a 74.1%. So I get a C about a C average uh, if you're grading it by letter um, 11 wins out of 14 so uh, that means uh, 11 out of, 11 out of 14 was against I, I won against SJ3 U7 Frieza and Ginyu leader uh, which is 78.6 the interesting part is that uh, 9 out of 13 I only won 9 times out of 13 against other leaders which is a 69.2% so I was more likely to win against uh, conventional leaders than unconventional leaders. So what does this mean? Well, if you are, this kind of um, proves the theory that if I do play a uh, net deck list or uh, a popular leader, I have a less likely chance of winning against my own deck, which is the U7 Frieza with veggies. I have a less likely chance of winning. So that's a pretty interesting way of looking at it. Um, so another part is uh, I, I won 10 times out of 14 against conventional engines. So engines are like things that are common inside of the leaders. So I was playing the veggie engine. Other conventional engines could be the chain attack Xena, which was the most popular uh, engine in all of the, the deck. Not sure because it's budget or it's actually decent, but it might be a combination of both. That is decent and that it's budget. Um, and it helped win a lot of games uh, over the weekend. So 10 out of 14 uh, against conventional leaders was 71.4% uh, that I that I won against conventional engines. So conventional engine is uh, Veggie, Chain Attack, and Apes. Um, I wanted to include a Victory Strike, but Victory Strike is only played in one leader. So I didn't find that to be the conventional engine. So it fell into the engine of unconventional. Um, so out of the unconventional engines, uh, I won 9 times out of 13, which is a 69.2%. So that's a D. Uh, so I'm more likely to win against a conventional engine, uh, such as Veggies, Apes, and uh, Chain Attack Zeno, than I am to win against unconventional engines. Uh, most of my losses uh, throughout these tournaments was because I was playing against rogue strategies. Uh, so I played against, uh, I believe, Vegeta, uh, which tends to create you, Mass Saiyan, which likes to create you and take you out of the game. And uh, I also lost to Chain Attack Zeno. Uh, most of the time. Uh, I had a game against uh, the Xenotrunks uh, leader uh, where he chain attacked Xeno on me twice and it was absolutely devastating uh, because I had like, such a huge board and they were they, they managed to survive the onslaught and then reset the board because they have that combo in their in their deck. So yeah that's the analytics part I wanted to share with you guys with my uh, with my, my matchups that I had. I played a total of 27 games, so that's uh, pretty interesting. I had two buys, um, and it happened in the beginning of the round. One of the buys was unintentional because the player didn't want to play me, so I just count that as a buy. So I could have played 28 times, but one of the guys just didn't want to play. Yeah, he came there for the Colossal Warfare pack, but it was a uh, overall great experience. I finally got one. I try to be greedy and try to get more than one of these, and they look so nice. Like, it's such a beautiful... Uh, certificate so I'm glad I, I tried really hard to get it uh, even though you know I, I wish I got more uh, my my friend Brian from uh, uh, from the same city as me he had uh, two of them so and he only tried three times so that just shows the the gap is between me and my skill and his uh, or just my choice of deck leaders versus his so um, yeah uh, I'll have I'll talk about the the deck list uh, that I played and the changes I made throughout each of the tournaments uh, on my next segment. So I'll watch out for that. Hey guys, so this is my uh, deck profile. Uh, so if you guys just want to just copy the deck, uh, well, I don't see any incentive for ever copying the deck because uh, set four is going to be released and this whole list is going to be changing with the times. But we have about like maybe five days left of the format. So if you guys just want to copy the deck, that's fine. 
so here's the deck. Um, mainly, uh, I this is the the, the deck here. Um, I I shifted out some cards uh, before I should start the, the deck profile. This used to be a uh, mass saying, um, and I realized mass saying was subpar to scientist food. In a lot of scenarios, um, so I put I replaced mass saiyan for scientist food. Uh, another thing was I cut one planet Vegeta. I find that since I'm drawing so much with this leader, there was really no need for me to play uh, a so many planet Vegeta to search for my targets. And most of the time, I couldn't combo with planet Vegeta, so I just cut one planet Vegeta, and I replaced it with a one Goku Black. Um, Mainly because Goku Black is a green card, and um, it gives me a more Shigesh targets, and it helps me combo and defend better, uh, which was the deck's weakness. Uh, so I, I mitigated this by playing one, one Goku Black, which ended up um, winning me some games, uh, ironically enough. And I only needed one, so because I draw so many with uh, with this leader. Um, so mainly this 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 deck plays about, I believe, six plus eight, so that's fourteen different new. Uh, universe 7 discards for this guy and uh, even if I don't have enough I can always uh, re reoccur them using this card uh, I wouldn't recommend it though um, to reoccur them but in clutch situation it does come up where you can recycle a U7 card using uh, Trunks power overseeing time and then discard it using this leader um, this leader draws a lot um, oh and another thing I uh, did change was I used to play two Nimbuses but now I play one Crusher Ball uh, the the change is debatable, but Crusher Ball is essentially the same thing as a negate. The only difference is uh, cards that attack um, to to generate advantage is stopped um, with Crusher Ball or Nimbus. Um, so Crusher Ball, uh, a pro of that is that if they play like Overrealm cards, it basically kills it. And uh, Crusher Ball is really good against Victory Strike, and I can't use this on Victory Strike. Uh, Crusher Ball is also good against uh, Kale, so if they play Kale and they have five or less in their hand. They can't draw a card when she attacks because she's already in rest mode. So that's one advantage of playing one Crusher Ball. And I always, I only want to play one of each because again, this leader draws a lot, so there's no need for me to play a lot. Um, I play four Roshis uh, mainly against the aggro decks. Uh, I anticipate I would play against a lot of uh, uh, Vegeta or Mass Saiyan leaders, so I max them out. Uh, just early game to stop them from taking my life down to zero. And uh, this deck wins the long game, uh, surprisingly enough, over the uh, the short game. So I try to extend the game at least to turn five so I can drop this and start uh, pummeling my opponent. Uh, plus, uh, with Roshi and Nimbus, it's a co it's kind of like a uh, card combination where I basically end my opponent's turn. Because I negate the first attack with Nimbus, I discard a yellow. They can attack one more time. So I use Roshi to negate the last one, so that ends my opponent's turn. That's a combination, uh, which is why I play a, uh, a significant amount of yellows. So it was it was decent enough. Uh, this deck is mainly uh, I try to get Kaba as soon as possible by drawing a lot and thinning out my deck so that I can get either my Khalifa red Khalifa or my green Khalifas. So, and I typically want to have two two Kabas on the board consistently so that my Khalifa here are free and my Kale only costs two. And eventually, if I have three Kabas, she only costs one. So it's a really cool deck. Uh, this is the deck I took. It was really great. Uh, Krillin is actually very useful, too, uh, even though he's a, a discard fodder for U7. I mainly used Krillin so that I can disrupt my opponent's plays. So if you're, if I'm playing against, like let's say, the Majin Buu engine, I can use Krillin, take a life, which helps me awaken quicker, and I take out their three-cost card, like uh, the Searcher Ma Majin Buu, so they can't evolve over it next turn. Same thing with King Vegeta. Uh, if they play King Vegeta, in theory I can just play this on turn 3, kill the King Vegeta, so they can't evolve for the absolute defense. So I put some thought into this deck uh, as I was progressing. Uh, and then uh, finally of course uh, Shigesh is kind of like the heart and soul of this I'm not heart and soul, but it enables uh, huge pushes in this deck. And I, man I managed to get one uh, event, event foil version of it. Uh, Exploder Coup, uh, really important in this deck because this deck doesn't have as much defense as much most other decks does, like uh, SSJ3 with 8 super combos that reoccur all the time. So there are, your only form of defense is playing the Shigesh Explosive, and the Shigesh, uh, and the Explosive is a blocker and has barrier. So 
uh, that little lineup allows me to uh, extend the game till turn five. So when I drop this guy, I'm able to awaken quicker and then end the game. Uh, sometimes I'll go down to one life so that I can swing for a lot of damage. Uh, sometimes 45. And that really, like, already 45 base stat on its own is very, um, how do I say this? It's very deadly. So, yeah, that's the deck list I took. Um, it was, I was really proud that I was able to at least get one certificate with this deck list. Uh, so, um, in the future, uh, I might play with this leader still, but I'm not too sure if I can play it well with the the uh, veggie package, because Shugeshi is getting the silver bullet with uh, Kronoa uh, this coming set, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, this was the checklist. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.